this is Jackie B. Peterson. I'm the author of Better, Smarter, Richer, Seven Business Principles for Solo, Encore, and Creative Entrepreneurs. It's my mission to help solos, those of you in one-person businesses, understand and apply the seven solo business principles to your enterprises so that you can find more financial success. What I know as a longtime business advisor and consultant is that solo businesses are distinctly different from traditional businesses, and there are simply some things that you need to do if you're going to be financially successful as a solo. So please visit my website, bettersmarterrichard.com. You can download the free ebook outlining the seven principles, Sign up for my free newsletter and join the conversation on the blog, which is pretty lively. Of course, you can also buy the book, which is a fill-in-the-blanks workbook, which will help you understand your thinking that needs to change if you want to find the financial success you're seeking. Today's guest on our Solo Pro Radio show is Bill Zinke. Bill is an attorney, a management consultant, and a human resources professional. He founded Human Resources Services in 1969. He has always focused on strategic issues such as recruitment and selection systems, management training, and development and performance management. Long history there. However, for many years now, Bill and HRS, his company, have been focused on issues related to aging, retirement, and workforce planning, and the utilization of older workers, all issues we are going to discuss today. That focus on older workers led Bill to create a not-for-profit organization called the Center for Productive Longevity, whose mission is to stimulate the substantially increased engagement of people 50 and older in productive activities. I love that, being that I'm one of that population, and I'm all, as you all know, listeners, I'm all about this issue this year. We're going to talk a lot about encores and encore entrepreneurship. So hello, Bill, and welcome to the show. Nice to be with you. I'm happy that you're here. I'm, I'm very excited about learning more about your center, but uh, first of all, uh, you've been involved in human resources and workforce issues for uh, 45 years. So what changes have you seen in the last few years as baby boomers and that generation reaches 65 and people begin to retire? What's going on? Well, I think there are a few uh, salient uh, factors to discuss. One is that uh, people have begun to recognize that we had a great gift given to us from beginning to end of the 20th century, namely 30 more years of longevity. And so people are thinking about how they want to spend those additional years and also how they can afford to enjoy living in those extended years. So that's one factor. Another factor is that we have high unemployment, low economic growth, and both of those for the foreseeable future. So one uh, viable option, in fact, the most viable option is for people 50 and older to, to uh, create their own business. So that's another factor. And uh, uh, a third factor that, I, that I'd, I'd like to mention is the, is the uh, reality that we have had a great uh, recession, which began in the latter part of 2007, uh, which had a serious impact on the financial uh, the financial uh, uh, situation of uh, older people. And uh, many of them, as a result, want or need to continue working. How's that for a starter? Well, that's a good start. It's rich ground we're talking about here. So, you know, I probably your observations came uh, from your extensive work in human resources, but how did you really get um, interested in this concept of, of productive longevity? How, how, did, you know, how did that come into being in your own thinking? Well, uh, I, uh, I began uh, thinking of, as a part of my focus on strategic workforce planning, mm-hmm. I began thinking about the uh, reality that we had this, uh, this uh, uh, evolution of baby boomers coming along, 78 million of them, and, uh, and how we could uh, uh, engage this, uh, this talent pool, people with experience, expertise, seasoned judgment, and proven performance. I call that double ESP, by the way. Oh, well, tell me that again, uh, DXP. Double ESP. Yeah, tell me about that again. Experience and? Experience, expertise, seasoned judgment, and proven performance. Oh, I like that. 
maybe yeah. some of them even acquire a little bit of wisdom. And yes, yes. So, uh, well, you know, we've we've talked a lot about that. I don't know if you've uh, uh, listened to any of the uh, earlier podcasts of, of the show, but we spent um, three sessions talking with a consultant about uh, what would come under expertise and seasoned judgment because we were talking about that uh, culture in businesses has changed in the 21st century and that there's new skills that kind of get lumped together under the concept of soft skills, but it has a lot to do with emotional intelligence and, uh, you know, teamwork in organizations and flat organizations and uh, changing from command and control to uh, entrepreneurship and innovation and uh, changing to the concept of the people that are most valuable are those with uh, the qualities of emotional intelligence. So we've talked a lot about that, and you're, you've summed it up very nicely because uh, emotional intelligence seems to come uh, a lot with maturity, seasoned judgment. Right. Well, I have a favorite saying, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. <laughs> that tells us that uh, kind of a life story, doesn't it? <laughs> I, that's why older people... Uh, can be more successful than younger ones. They have they have that double ESP, which the younger ones. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> I like the way that you say that. And you know how heartening to hear you say that when um, I've been talking recently to a lot of uh, groups that call themselves they're working on recareering, and there's a lot of people who are really discouraged. You know. They got uh, laid off and um, downsized uh, in the, you know, in the Great Recession, and they're looking to get hired again. And, you know, they might have sent out 200 resumes and haven't gotten one interview, not even one. And, uh, you know, it's so wonderful to hear somebody saying, this is the uh, AG, this is the group that has double ESP, and these are really, really valuable folks. And in, uh, you know, you're crazy if you don't bring them into your organization. Well, let me say this. I, 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 one of my favorite sayings is you don't, you, don't, uh, get old, you don't stop having fun when you get older. You get older when you stop having fun. Oh, I like and, that too. Have, <laughs> we I just have, had a... Uh, a great editorial here in Portland um, in the in the newspaper, and it says uh, you have to age, but you don't have to get old. And uh, I kind of like that as well. You know, in fact, we're lucky to age, as you call it. You know, we're we've got an extra 30 years that people never used to have before. But you know, you don't have to get old. You don't have to uh, forget the beauty in life and the fun in things and the joy of being human. And you know, you don't have to do that part. Well, as you know, I'm 86 years old, so I think that I, uh, I, I do not my, consider myself to be an anatomical wonder. I think rather that I reflect the reality that people are able to remain productively engaged for significantly longer numbers of years. Yes, I think that's wonderful. I just think that's wonderful. I'm, I'm a youngster compared to you, Bill. I'm only 70. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> So what is the Center for Productive Longevity? Talk to us about that and your, not pro your nonprofit here that you created. Okay. We created the Center for Productive Longevity in 19, uh, no, in 2006. Uh-huh. And, and the focus originally was on, the mission was to stimulate the substantially increased engagement of people 50 and older in productive activities, paid and volunteer, where they were qualified and ready to continue adding value. Mm -hmm. We have shifted our focus to entrepreneurship because uh, we have high unemployment and low economic growth. Uh, one viable option, probably the best viable option, is for people 50 and older to create their own business. There are 99 million people in America who are 50, 50 and older. That is almost one-third of the total population. And uh, many of these, millions of these people, want or need to continue working and we need we need to uh, enable them to do that and uh, so our our mission has been to focus on entrepreneurship that's fantastic it's so fun for me to be um, uh, talking to the choir here because i am 
so attuned with exactly what you have to say. Um, when I go talk to these um, recareering groups, I say, for heaven's sakes, you know, if you can't find the work you want, create it. You know, um, what what people are is, as you're talking about, we're, we're subject matter experts. We've spent our lives learning things, and uh, so not only do we have expertise about something that we can turn around and sell to someone, but, you know, I'm sure you're very aware of what I keep calling the demographic hole, that there's, you know, our 78 or 79 million baby boomers, and right behind them, the next generation of Gen X is only 33 million people, and what that means is we're approximately 40 million people short to replace the baby boomers leaving the workforce. And it seems to me that's a great opportunity for the baby boomers to turn around and say, you know, I've spent 30 years in whatever, 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 and I have information, and instead of taking it from the workforce and retiring with it in my brain, I can turn around and offer for sale as a consultant, a coach, a teacher, an advisor, a, you know, a, a person that is going to mentor I can turn around and teach this to this generation behind me who needs this information. And I just think there's just a fantastic opportunity for, you know, people to do that because the information is necessary. We still need it. I, I'm, I'm sure you play see with that words as well. And I'm going to play with words for a minute and to change your demographic hold to spell whole, W-H-O-L-E. <laughs> I, I believe that, that we need to make uh, – older workers more of a whole part of our society <clears throat> yes. and instead of sitting on the sidelines <clears throat> in fact I call it sitting on their assets <laughs> I, be I believe that uh, we, we need to provide them with opportunities or really stimulate them to to create opportunities that yes. will enable them to remain productively engaged and to continue giving value as a matter of fact I have a list of the reasons why um, baby boomers, and as a matter of fact, uh, according to AARP, recent AARP studies, 80% of the baby boomers, 50 and older, intend to continue working when they leave their regular career jobs. But yes. let me read some of the reasons why they want to do that. A desire to, re to remain productively engaged in the field they are continuing to add value. A desire to remain, to remain intellectually engaged and keep their mental edge sharp. A desire to remain socially connected, to build their savings for the retirement years, including health care needs. Uh, a desire to start a new business and be their own bo boss, to march their, to their own drummer. Yes. Recognition that 30 years were added to longevity in the 20th century and that they don't want to sit on the sidelines for that length of time, even though they don't need the money. Yes. Those, are, those to me, are the driving forces for people 50 and older to... Uh, to remain engaged and and with un high unemployment, the 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 most viable uh, option is to create a new business. What do you oh, think? it absolutely is. It absolutely is. And as they say, uh, <coughs> what I see is that this population is just knows things. You know, as you said, they've got the expertise. They they know what it is. They know how to do things and. Uh, the the rest of the population needs that knowledge and how awful to think you have to sit on the sidelines knowing things that other people need and nobody asks you. So, you know, it's time to bring it forth. And uh, I'm seeing that happen a lot. And uh, I, 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 I just, I, I have a hard time with people that uh, uh, get too discouraged and just can't imagine that they've got anything to offer the rest of the world. It's, um, it certainly helps to have an optimistic st spirit and a positive attitude. As a matter of fact, that contributes to living longer. Yes. Yes. I think so, too. I think so, too. Not so uh, you started this in 2006, and um, how are you doing it, getting your message out? What's, what's happening? Well, um, I'm doing a number of things. Uh, originally, our focus was on, on, on stimulating the substantially increased engagement of people at 50 and older in productive activities with the idea that uh, we would uh, stimulate companies to create flexible workplace options that would attract and retain older people. Mm -hmm. Along came the Great Recession, and so uh, 
uh, we switched our focus to uh, the entrepreneurship route, and uh, in 2012, uh, we, we held four, CPL that is, held four one-day meetings in different parts of the country on the uh, uh, benefits and opportunities of entrepreneurship for people 50 and older. Mm-hmm. And uh, we did it in different parts of the, co- in the country, like the Kauffman Foundation in, in, in Kansas City, Missouri, which is a focal point for entrepreneurship in America. Right. Then we went to Babson College, which is really – it is the only school in the country that is totally focused on entrepreneurship. Uh-huh. And then to uh, Chicago on the on the campus of uh, uh, Northwestern and the Kellogg School, and finally the University of Denver here in our area. Uh-huh. And uh, uh-huh. the response was very positive. We had over 400 participants in the four meetings. And uh, based on the written evaluations they provided when the meetings were over, uh, very, very positive. Ninety-seven percent of the uh, respondents said that they were far more interested in uh, entrepreneurship, and seventy-four percent said they were they were going to consider taking the entrepreneurial route. So I would say they were pretty successful. And then Do you have any um, any follow-up, um, even anecdotes yet from people where they come back and say, "Okay, I was so inspired," uh, you know, when we met to you know, in Kansas City or Chicago, I pursued uh, starting my own business, and here's what I've done, and now I, I'm doing this. Do you have stories like that that have happened? Well, after the meeting uh, at Babson, a group was formed called the BEG, the Boston Entrepreneurial Group, uh-huh. and, and uh, they have been meeting, uh, they've met several times at Babson College, and I know that there are some people who have created new businesses, but I can't give you specifics. I have. Uh huh. Uh huh. I tend to look more forward than I do backward. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We have. Uh, I've stayed in touch with a fellow who who manages the group, but I have not uh, gone back on specifics. Mm-hmm. Then in 2013, we held a one-day national conference on the entrepreneurship imperative for people 50 and older. Uh, that was uh, uh, quite successful. Uh, we had uh, uh, we had uh, an excellent uh, uh, group of speakers, uh, which can be uh, found uh, by checking our website that I'll provide later. Mm-hmm. We really uh, we had an excellent uh, meeting, and uh, and that has led me into what we're, what to do in 2014. I am collaborating with two of the speakers in uh, last year's national conference on organizing a series of five two-part events in different parts of the country in, um, let me see, Atlanta, uh, Chicago, Philadelphia, Dallas, and Seattle, which is somewhat close to your town. Yes. And uh, each of each of those uh, uh Event. There, the first part is a general session uh, for an evening, a two-and-a-half-hour session in the evening for people 50 and older that, uh, that talks about the benefits and opportunities of uh, entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. And then what, what, what follows is, is really an important uh, uh, addition. There will be, a, about a month later, a, a two-day workshop, an intensive, interactive workshop led by Jeff Williams, who has a, a long career in training and developing entrepreneurs, like like 4,000 of them over the last 25 years. Mm-hmm. He will lead this workshop that will uh, cover in detail the how-tos oh, of a successful new business. So that's our, on our agenda for 2014. We also, at the uh, conference last November, we uh, we talked about a framework for a plan of action. Mm-hmm. Action is what needs to be done at the governmental level and the private sector level and all the different segments to create a more an environment that is more encouraging and uh, and re- rewarding for uh, people to create new businesses. For example, right. improve uh, reduce regulations that at times seem quite burdensome. Yes. To, uh, create financial tax and, and financial incentives for people to create new businesses, a variety of actions that can be taken at the governmental level, also at the academic level, 
I believe that 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 uh, colleges and universities should be and not only have uh, uh, courses and programs on entrepreneurship, but that they should tailor some of those uh, activities to people older, people 50 and older, because they're in a different position than the younger people. Yeah. They have, they have the double ESP, but they but they don't have uh, knowledge about how to create a new business. What what are right. what are the essential how tos and how to make them work? Right. So, uh, right. Yes. So you know. Um, our, our, I work part-time at the Small Business Development Center at Portland Community College in Portland, Oregon, and um, we are making a definite commitment uh, to focus on Encore Entrepreneurs, and we are doing two programs uh, with the uh, local AARP and our regional Small Business Administration in April, talking about, we've, we're calling it Work After 50 Plus, so we've got two events going on, uh, April 22nd and April 24th. And then this fall, we are launching our um, entrepreneur, Encore Entrepreneur Program, which is going to consist of a session where, well, actually it's going to be three two-hour sessions where participants will work through getting clear about what their business concept is. Because as I've, I've told you, Bill, I keep finding that people – uh, often can't imagine uh, what would be a saleable idea, you know, what would be a marketable idea. And I always tell people that the sweet spot for their business is where, you know, if you draw a Venn diagram and your three circles are passion, talent, and a stream of revenue, that the sweet spot for your business is where those three circles intersect. And um, anyway, so there's a whole series of questions and activities we're going to take people through so they can identify that sweet spot for their business. And right. um, then that will follow with a, uh, a business plan writing class. And this is a uh, short, almost like a one-page business plan, just enough to uh, clarify your thinking, identify uh, your target market, um, understand your unique value proposition, um, you know, think about your pricing model, you know, those sort of things, not a uh, go-to-the-bank business plan, but a, you know, a really useful operating business plan. And then that's going to be followed by what can be as many as uh, 24 weeks in basic skills, either um, renewal or learning for the first time, and they will come in the area of uh, financing and bookkeeping and, you know, basic accounting uh, marketing, uh, you know, what you need to do and developing a, uh, a quick and easy marketing plan. Uh, we're going to have a, a session or four weeks for each of these uh, topics is four two-hour sessions. And the third one is going to be uh, getting your business on the web. In other words, how to use e-tools to uh, present and market your business from websites to webinars to teleconferences to uh, using things like newsletters and blogs and, you know, all the ways that people are marketing their businesses now. Um, we will have a piece on basic operations, a piece on sales. So anyway, there's, there's a whole series of topics, and each topic is going to have four two-hour sessions involved with it. And then the last piece will be, you know, my piece, which we've been teaching at our uh, college for three years now, which is out of my workbook, Better, Smarter, Richer, which is basically the principles of solopreneurship, the things that you must do to be successful as a solo. And um, because SBA is telling us that 78.5% of businesses never hire employees. And I think that the model of solopreneurship is absolutely perfect, you know, for someone who wants to monetize their expertise and wants to have a business that is, uh, one that they can do as long as they live, and it's just a matter of how intensely you want to do it. Yep, so anyway, we're going to have this whole program that puts together. It comes into about um, 32 weeks that they can you know, attend uh, two or three-hour classes every single week, and while they are doing that, um, we will have one-on-one -on -one, uh, business advisor or advisors working with them and they will also have access to a peer group, a cohort peer group, 
where they can be uh, sharing their experiences with one another. And um, anyway, we're, we're going to be offering that entire program for uh, $1,500, but our first, it looks like about 100 students will um, be able to apply for um, uh, $1,000 scholarship into the program, and then we'll be measuring business starts and, you know, success of the group. Does, is, is AARP providing the scholarships? Or the um, actually, the scholarships are coming through a, um, a department of uh, Portland Community College. They have a, an organization that's got some funding called Life by Design Northwest that was set up to do some um, elder uh, work about seven years ago, and there's some funding available through that. And um, that sounds, but, sounds great. Incidentally, I'd like to put in a plug for your book. I think it's excellent, and I recommend that people buy it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Um, we're, we're just extremely excited about, you know, the, um, both the, the need and the opportunity for us with this program. And the word is beginning to get out. Um, we're already having people show up and say, okay, I'm, you know, I can just tell you two I've recently talked to. One is a, a woman that's uh, 52. She's reached as far as she can go in her career. Uh, she does accounting and bookkeeping. Her CFO has told her there's no place for you to go here, and I can't give you a raise. And she says, you know, what I really want to do is accounting, bookkeeping, and business management for small creative businesses. And I've said to her, oh, my goodness, you are going to be so busy, you can't even imagine. And so we're going to get her started on her own business. And then a man who's 58 who has said, I couldn't stand, I'm a landscaper, I couldn't stand running my big crews every week, and I just I sold my business, and now what I'm doing is my specialty is uh, vertical landscape, you know, vertical landscape walls, you know, where you put up the wall and all the plants are in the wall, and uh, water features. And I'm doing those on my own for people, and I'm just getting great satisfaction out of helping them bring, you know, um, beautiful things to their yards and to their outside. So, you know, and that's just Monday, you know. So people are showing up it almost in droves, about 50% of the people that have uh, taken my Better, Smarter, Richer program at Portland Community College are people 50-plus. Uh-huh. And... Um, you know, they're, they're just saying, we hear you work with our population, and here's what we want to do. So it's really exciting. Do, do you, would you agree that older people, uh, 50 and older, need, need to learn differently about entrepreneurship than younger people? Oh, sure, because they've got I'm, life experience, you know. You, uh, you know, you, they, they need stuff that is very practical and very hands-on, uh, very experiential, as we call it, and, you know, they don't want to know the theory. Uh, they want to know, what do I do, when do I do it, how do I do it, and why can't I start five minutes ago? You know, there's, uh, there's an interesting statistic. The uh, Kaufman Foundation in Kansas City, Missouri, has for each of the last 17 years cond- sponsored an annual survey on uh, entrepreneurship by age groups. Mm-hmm. And uh, contrary to popular thinking, uh, people 55 to 64 have each year on average uh, created 8.7% more new businesses than people 20 to 34. We tend oh, to yes. Think, we tend to think that the younger people like the Mark Zuckerbergs and Jeff Bezos's who are uh, creating new businesses. And of course, they've done, great, they've done great jobs, but there are a lot of older people who are also uh, – in there and doing an excellent job as well. I've got a I've got a suggestion for you. What was the title of your set of your program? Uh, right now we're just calling it our Encore Entrepreneurship Program. Oh, but, but didn't you have a you know, talk about uh, a new, creating uh, organizing a new business or doing? Oh yes, yes. I haven't got a real name for it. What do you What do you think? Uh, I, instead of instead of saying start starting, I like creating a new yes. business. Yes. Yes. I, I always keep saying that. You're right. Create it's the work action, you love. It's an action word. Yes. Yes. And that's really what we're talking about. It's down the, I have a, there's another saying I like, and then I want to say something about it. A saying is, age is mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't matter. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. There, there are a lot of older people who tend to be somewhat apologetic uh, and uh, about being older. And actually, I go back to my double ESP. They have they have a lot of of of, uh, of that under their belts, and maybe even some accumulated wisdom. So yeah. they they can continue to add value, but they need to change their negative thinking around to being positive about how they can be productively engaged. I yes. think that's very important because I, I I know from all the people with whom I've de- I've got someone on my board of directors who is uh, 92 years old. Oh, great! His name is Bruce Merrifield. He was Under Secretary of Commerce for Economic Affairs for four years during the Reagan administration. He went on to become a, a chaired professor at Wharton School, creating an entrepreneurship program for them. And uh, he's 92 and going strong. And another fellow on my board is named Bill Webster. He was at different times the director of the FBI and the CIA. He is latter 80s, and he's also he's continuing to practice law, and he's very busy. So Isn't I just that give you great? those as examples of, of of people who are just examples. They're not they're not uh, unusual. They are simply they more reflect the reality that demographic change has added a lot of years where we can remain productively engaged. I think that's just wonderful. You know, I think that the uh, what we've got to overcome is kind of maybe the picture of when we grew up and, and how old our grandparents were when they were 65 or 70, you know, and we're not that. You know, we're not that. We are, um, I keep saying we're, we're creative, we're healthy, we're curious, we're interested, we're vital when we're actively engaged, you know. And I keep thinking that the surprise, because it seems to be a surprise, the surprise is not that the um, population age boom, you know, age wave, as uh, Ken Dykewald called it, you know, was going to come. We've known that for 20 years that this age wave was coming. But I don't think there was an expectation of how, you know, healthy and creative and energetic people would be. I mean, have you thought about that? I think that was a big surprise. Well, I, I think that's true. You know, the, the, the MacArthur Foundation uh, 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 conducted a study on aging in America, and it's also supported by documentation from uh, a research by the Harvard School of Public Health. People, older people who remain productively engaged uh, enjoy better health report greater satisfaction with life, and live five years longer than those who sit on the sidelines. Yes. So this is demonstrable evidence that uh, remaining remaining active and and adding value uh, can can have very positive results for individuals, older individuals. Yes, physically active and mentally active. Yeah, phys- well, physically active and even emotionally active. And that yes. also requires another factor is that we have a greater focus on wellness and health and wellness than, uh, than was the case uh, umpteen years ago. Yes. And, and that certainly contributes to people living longer. There's, I, I, I think it's, it, there's not a, a week that goes by that <clears throat> I don't see an article that says, in fact, there's one in our newspaper today, that says, for heaven's sakes, don't sit at your desk. Stand up. At least stand up and, help, and talk. Stand up and do this. Walk across the room. See how far you can walk in, in two minutes. Test yourself. Climb the stairs in your office. You know, get your body moving, and it doesn't have to be you know, that you're out there playing racquetball. Get up. Stand up. Walk around. Do something. You know? And uh, that we have to be in motion and um, have to uh, keep our minds active. One of my future guests, is uh, going to be a man who is uh, one of the founders of a group called Mind Ramp Consulting. And they're talking about brain health and cognitive enhancement. And he has put together a, uh, a program called Memorobics, where he you know, works with people on you know, just brain games to get your brain cells moving. And he said, what I have learned is our brains love change they love surprise they love curiosity they love music they love new things and uh you know that's i think is part of being um productive you know productive longevity i i I totally agree i uh 
I have a stand-up desk in my office, and I frequently will work from that instead of sitting down. And I, I also, uh, uh, I'm a great believer in physical fitness. I work out four times a week at a nearby health club, and I tend to eat a healthy di diet, although I'm not anal about it. But uh, generally, I eat a healthy diet, and uh, I believe that these are things that contribute to your living longer and in better health. Yes, yes. Because I, I can remember uh, being a lot younger, and people would say, gosh, you know, if you, if you eat well, you can live another five years. And, you know, people would say, well, who wants to be a little old lady or a little old man for five more years, you know, thinking of somebody that is feeble or wheelchair-bound or, um, you know, not engaged, you know, not productively engaged, as you say it. I like your words. And you think, well, I don't want longer of that. You know, if I'm going to become that, the sooner I leave the place, the planet, the better. And, um, you know, it's that what we're finding now is that does not have to be. You can choose differently. And yep. um, when you choose differently, everything changes. You know, I talked before about having an optimistic uh, attitude and a, po and a positive spirit. Um, I... Uh, uh, I really believe that's important. A, a, a lot of older people uh, really uh, do believe that they are over the hill and out of the game when they reach a certain age. And, and, and with the increased on longevity of 30 years, that simply is not a, a relevant way of thinking. You know, I enjoy telling people that I'm over the hill. I pause for a moment, and then I say, and what I've learned is you pick up speed going down the other side. <laughs> nice <laughs> that's really nice well, if you if you if you poke fun at yourself and you go and you don't go around with your hat in your hand apologizing and being old, older that really helps that that does really help you know and it, it always has seemed strange to me that uh, our society is so focused on uh, youth and what is young and that we have overlooked uh, you know, the wisdom of aging or the double ESP, as you call it, for so long, and that an awful lot of people have kind of bought into that and, um, you know, have bought into the idea that they're not valuable anymore. And, man, I'm bucking that trend. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Good for you, and uh, I'll tell you a quick anecdote. I, a number of years ago, I was playing squash. I played squash with a, with a fellow who turned up one day and he played a lousy game and I said, something must be bothering you. And he said, uh, yeah, he said, I was just fired by, by the company. He was, the, he was then heading a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a team in the technology field. And, uh, and I said, you know, you, you have to, t and he was just feeling very uh, down, downtrodden about the whole situation. And I said, you know, you've got to turn your thinking around. You, you've been managing this high technology group and uh, and uh, you have a lot to offer other companies, and uh, and what you need to do is to talk about how wh what you can what you can offer that will add value. And uh, instead of going going into the into a meeting with your hat in your hand and and, and being apologetic, and so oh, about a month later we played squash again and he had a happy face. He had he had accepted my advice and followed it and he had a new job. Oh, that's great. So it's just one small example. A lot of it depends upon how you feel about yourself. Yeah. That, that, that is conveyed to others. Oh, immediately. I like to say life is what you think it is. Well, that'll do. <laughs> you know, and if you, if, you think it's, if, if you think it's awful and you're being put upon and, you know, things aren't working and, you know, there's no future for you, you're right, you know. And if you think it's an exciting time and there's all kinds of opportunities and there's wonderful places to be involved and, you know, things to do and, and new ways to be in the world, you're right. And, uh, you know, oh. we, we, make that, we make that future ourselves. So, so, Bill, you talk about the economic imperative of all of this, of Encore Entrepreneurship. So do you want to talk a little bit about that economic imperative? Well, yes. Uh, uh Many people have had their, their financial situations adversely impacted by the Great Recession that began in the latter part of 2007. And, uh, and so uh, one reason it's an imperative is because uh, many of these people want or need uh, additional income. Another, another aspect is that uh, 
with 99 people, almost one third of the total population, 50 and older, we have a, a huge number of people going on to the social, the social, the entitlement programs, mm-hmm. and uh, it is simply uh, unsustainable to have all of these people drawing from instead of continuing to work and contributing to the economy. Mm-hmm. So that, to me, is those are two aspects of the imperative. Another is that uh, we we need to use this talent pool. They can help to uh, entrepreneurship. This is the point I wanted to make before. Uh, creating new, uh, creating new businesses lead leads it lead it leads in many cases to uh, hiring more people and uh, therefore increasing employment and also economic growth on the national level. So that's another aspect of the of the imperative. We now have. A, a poor economy, it's, it's barely growing, and uh, we have high employment, unemployment. So uh, enabling or stimulating these people to create new businesses uh, has, has not only a benefit on them, but also on uh, employment and economic growth at the national level. And, you know, new businesses... Um also not only have the potential to create jobs, but they also create uh, and open up new discoveries, new processes, uh, new ways of doing things, new tools, new techniques that can become part of you know, the, the whole new cyber economy that we're growing, um, you know, we, that we don't know what it is. And I keep saying that uh, new thinking can help us approach some of the issues, you know, some of the great big issues that we have before us of uh, what are we going to do about energy and what are we going to do about water and what are we going to do about uh, agriculture. I mean, you know, we've got to have some new thinking and new businesses can approach that by bringing new ideas forth. And, uh, Without question, but, but, but the two uh, fundamentally important national issues are employment and economic growth. Yep. And, and uh, creating new businesses can help to uh, turn that situation around. Yes. So yes. Uh, th- that's an important factor in my thinking. Uh, and and I, I, I can't reiterate enough how much I'm with you. I talk about, you know, 99 million people, a third of our economy or a third of our population cannot be dependent on Social Security and entitlement programs. Uh, we can't afford it. We absolutely can't. They, they will. They, they are. They are not sustainable at the present level. Right. They'll just collapse. And it's not. It's not I, I heard recently that there are over 80 entitlement programs. We all oh know about goodness. the obvious ones like Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and uh, food stamps. Mm-hmm. But there, uh, there's also a, a, a substantially growing one is uh, disability insurance. Oh wow. That has grown exponentially as more people have. Uh, uh, been able to uh, uh, get in under that umbrella, so it's it's uh, w- we are really facing tough economic climbs unless we turn the situation around and stimulate substantially more new business creation. Yes, it's a fundamentally important issue. Huge, huge. Well, I appreciate your expanding on that, and you know, I think that some people um, I have seen and talked to. Uh, just cannot imagine that they have a part in that that is greater than uh, aspiring to be a greeter at Walmart. And, you know, I just go, oh, my goodness, no, let's sit down and talk about what it is you know how to do and what you love and what you've been, you know, spending your life working on. Um, You know, what can you bring to the discussion? What do you know? What piece of knowledge have you got? Uh, You know, what expertise have you got? Because whatever it is, whatever that piece is that you're holding, the world needs it. So let's find a way for you to create a business out of that and not only take care of yourself but share what you know, you know, with the rest of the world. And that, that's a – people are stunned quite often with that idea, and then they go, wow, I like that idea, so let's, let's explore that. And, um, you know, that's no, what we're I, talking about. I'd like, to, I'd like to just tell a short family anecdote. When I, years ago, uh, a 16-year-old daughter walked in to see me one night and said she needed some ideas on, uh, on working for the summer because in those days our kids uh, – 
uh, work for during the summer for pin money during the school year. And so I said, well, how about getting a job as the assistant to the school? Uh, uh, not, they don't call them janitors anymore. They are school maintenance, yeah. executives, whatever they call them. Mm-hmm. And she said, great idea, Dad, but they don't take girls. And I said, why not? She said, I don't know. They just don't. So I said, well, you'll be the first one. My former wife was then a trustee uh, of, the, of the local school board. Uh, I don't know, the local uh, uh, management board. And uh, we had five kids going through the schools, all doing well. And so she applied, and of course she was accepted. She uh, and so she was the first. And now, of course, lots of girls uh, are are employed as the, uh, the superintendent's assistants. And and that that uh, experience had a had a wonderful impact on her, because uh, she has she has become an entrepreneur, and she's been extremely successful at it. So. <laughs> That's great. That had a great mark on, on, on her future life. And and what she could see is that uh, there was an opportunity to uh, step forward and move ahead anyway. I mean, don't allow someone saying they don't ever hire girls or whatever, whatever. They don't hire people over 50 or they don't hire blah, blah to stop you. Move ahead anyway. Yeah, you know, there there are barriers, some, some that we create for ourselves and some that exist uh, but but uh, many of those bar- barriers can be either climbed over, gone around, or just uh, um, mowed down, <laughs> or mowed down, whatever. But uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's all about having a can-do attitude. Yes, it is. It is, and um, you know sometimes people only need to have someone. Um, help them see the possibilities and that lights the spark inside of them and they say wow i can do this you know yes i can do this i i wasn't sure that i could but now i understand that i can and and that just tickles me when i see that happen well you know we we, t- we there are people who tell you that you should do uh, uh anagrams or crossword word puzzles or whatnot to keep your brain active there's nothing, there's nothing better to keep your brain active than, than in creating a new job. Oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> I, I've, I've said for a long time that people love to start businesses because they are so complex. And um, I think that that engages all areas of your mind, your heart, your emotions, your feelings, your, you know, your physical being to uh, create and develop a successful business. And I, I know that's why people love to start businesses. Um, you know, because it's it's like a big, gooey, you know, issue, problem, solution, solving, creativity, you know, attention. Uh, I pay attention to it, and I can make something happen here. And, you know, that's what people love about being in business. And well, and I can help them, and I like that. Well, so, so um, you know, as I, I told you, we have many of our – of our listeners are people who certainly fit our demographic and our description, people over 50 and people who are considering or in on core entrepreneurship. So if you just had one piece of advice to give them, what would it be? Um, um, let me see. To, to have a positive attitude and an optimistic spirit. Right. I can't think of anything more important than that. I guess I'd put sense of humor high on the list. <laughs> yes, yes. I used to... Um, what would you uh, put on top of the list? Yes. I used to, because uh, sometimes I get people that aren't very positive, and I used to say, okay, what I want you to do is take any 10-minute segment during your day and review it and think of everything that went wrong. You know, I couldn't find a parking place. My car was dirty. I was running late. My coffee spilled, you know, whatever it was. And then I want you to take that same 10 minutes and think of everything that went right. Good you know, you. see, my car is running well, and I was managed, did manage to get a hot cup of coffee, and I've got an appointment with somebody that I've wanted to meet for a long time, and the sun is shining. And, and I said, what I want to show you is an optimistic attitude depends on what you choose to see. And well, they I, I go, would go, wow. I go back to what I said at the beginning about longevity. There was an article written by, uh, oh, I've forgotten his name. He, he's a 
professor of economics at the University of Chicago. And he wrote an article that was headed, Longevity is the Greatest Gift of the 20th Century. And, and the truth is that, that it was, I don't know whether it was the greatest, but it was certainly a great gift. And gifts are made to be enjoyed. Yes. So uh, for all of your listeners, I urge you to take the gift of the 30 years that were added to longevity in the 20th century and make the most of them. Amen. Amen. I so, Bill, we're about out of time. I've loved our conversation, but would you like to tell our listeners how they can get hold of the center and possibly pay attention to the, the, uh, you know, the big meetups that we're going to be going on this uh, year? Sure. Uh, uh, and you know, just kind of tune into what you're doing. So how can they find you? Our website is C C T as in Thomas C T P as in Paul R L dot org C T R P L dot org, and on that you will find information about uh, uh, what we've been doing, what we are doing, and what we are planning to do. And uh, uh, I would be glad to have anybody contact me. My uh, email is w zinc w z i n k e. The E, by the way, is silent. Okay. <laughs> and at uh, uh, hrshrs.com or at ctl.org. Okay. And, and Very good. To- well, I have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation, and, you know, it's great talking to a kindred spirit. And, listeners, I just want to remind you that you're – uh, listening to Solo Pro Radio, and this is uh, your host today, Jackie B. Peterson. I'm the author of Better, Smarter, Richer, Seven Business Principles for Solo, Encore, and Creative Entrepreneurs. And I hope that we will be able to count on you tuning in uh, next week as we continue to, uh, this year, talk about the issues and the, uh, prac- the practitioners of Encore Entrepreneurship and that this is a program that informs you, inspires you, and says, hey, me too, I can, I can do things to make my 30 years of bonus life much more exciting and productive for me. And so I want to thank you for tuning in today, and Bill, I want to thank you for being with us. It was a Goodbye. pleasure to be involved, and I put in a second plug for your book. I think it's excellent. Well, thank you. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.